Howdy guys, Nintendo Capri's on here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X! We just made it onto some kind of ship. So we've been taken to all these different locations, we have no idea, like, where we're from, much less where we're going, and now we're on a ship, so we're on a boat, bitch. It's not active now, but there should still be some power left. And we're gonna go underwater to activate power. Salvage the big prize! Oh, okay. Okay, let's get to work! Roger. Oh God. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Being all flirtatious. Like even in these dire circumstances, T Titus is still cheerful enough to flirt with a girl or to give a thumbs up signal. I mean, that's just that kind of optimism is refreshing. I don't know. I mean, can you imagine how Squall would react to this situation? He wouldn't last ten minutes. He'd be all like, "Oh no!" <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So basically you dive down, and these controls are very awkward. Actually, you should keep the circle button down so you're not going in between two of the things here. Anyway. Wait, how, how what the heck? I'm not sure I know what I'm doing here. I can't see much of anything. I can see these two things, but I can't... Wait, oh, I'm going the wrong way for crying out loud. Oh, jeez. Uh, I must have been going back up towards the ship. I wasn't, I wasn't looking at the map. My bad. I was being stupid. Holy crap! What is this? Well, guys, this is random battle. This is random battle. <laughs> and uh, we have our girlfriend here to uh, help us out. These fish are kind of weird, because sometimes there'll be two or three of them, but they'll count as one enemy. So, yeah, whatever. And we both gain experience. Pretty minimal experience, but it's good. It's something. Later in the game, you gain, obviously, much more experience than you're used to. <laughs> okay, I was going the right way the first time. You just had to keep the circle button down. The Zirkle circle. And, uh, the encounter rate here is extremely low. Most of the time, you'll go through this entire sequence and not even have a random battle. Well, dude, huh. <laughs> okay, I could be wrong. Yeah, once again, just attack, attack. That's all you gotta do. Oh, I think she hit the two fish there. Oh, that was three fish that counted as one. Like I said, can be confusing. Yeah, one experience for that Pimley squad. And they dropped a Speed Sphere. Speed Sphere. <laughs> so, like, if you're ever on the Sphere Grid and you're next to a Speed Upgrade, you can put that onto the Sphere Grid to get the Speed Upgrade. So that's what I mean. There's, like, you put spheres into spheres. It's very confusing. It's, like, impossible to explain. But, you know, well, the more you do it, the more you get used to it, the more you realize how brilliant it really is. As stupid as it sounds, the, the concept is very strange, but the execution is flawless. Just about. Look at that, he just hits this thing! You don't know how this computer works, and you're just hitting it! You know, I'm, I'm sure you're from a pampered world where everything's all technological and shit, but seriously? Oh. Okay, so we're in some kind of circular room. I guess we need to just keep going right, I don't know. I'm just using the uh, control pad for now, not the joystick. Because <laughs> I'm being stew void. Well, it's a lucky thing we can hold our breath for so long. I just so happen to be a Blitzball player, and what, what do you end up doing but going underwater for 15 minutes? With no, you know, oxygen mask, no, no protection of any kind, just straight up underwater. Now, I should have actually used that sphere. Holy crap. Nasty. Some of the effects in this game, the things that the people do to your characters, look pretty painful. Especially the explosions that happen over your characters as it's happening. Just, ugh. Now, I'm going to actually go to my sphere grid. And, uh, like I said, there's not. I can't really do enough now to explain a lot about it, but this is where I am on the sphere grid, and I can look around, but I can't go to any of these. I can only go along the path marked by the white lines. Now, Sphere Level 1 on the left side of the screen tells how many levels I've gained, which means that's how many spots I can move. I can only move one spot. I can't move this way. I can't go down because there's a block there, actually a lock. It's hard to see on the screen. So it asks you if you want to proceed. I'll say yes. And as I said before, you can activate any sphere that's next to you or the one that you're currently on to get the upgrade that that sphere has to offer. So I'm going to activate the one next to me, which is the use the ability sphere to gain an ability. Now, if it was a, you know, a speed plus two sphere, 
I would have put a speed sphere into it. Or if it was strength plus two, I would have put a power sphere into it. You know, these spheres that you put in them get dropped during battle, so you'll you'll almost never have a shortage of spheres of that type, except for possibly ability spheres. Those get kind of hard to come by at a certain point. Examine. Let's see what we got here. Why don't you hit it, Titus? That's what you're best at, isn't it? Oh! <laughs> but strangely enough, his fists seem to be very good. Are your fists power conduits, Titus? Do you have electricity in you? Are you a robot? Are you Johnny Five? Actually, he acts a lot like Johnny Five. Tum to think of it. <laughs> tum to think of it. Tums, tum tums, tums, tums. We're gonna need some tums pretty soon here, because this guy's gonna give us diarrhea. Well, we got the power turned on. Let's get out of here. This kind of reminds me of the wrecked ship on Metroid. You get the power turned on. But, of course, on the way out... Oh, it seems we woke somebody up. Get some unwanted attention here. So, we're going to have Riku... Or, shit, shit, that's her name, Riku. Huge spoiler there! Okay, so we're going to have her steal the grenade. And, um... Tentacle. Ouch! I mean, look at that! That really hurts, man! Okay, now, Tita's ability, Cheer, what that actually does is increases your attack and defense. And believe it or not, this is actually a really useful ability. If you actually, like, experiment around with it, watch how much damage you do before it, and then after it, it's a pretty big difference, like, as much as 10 to 20 percent. Now, we can use Riku, er... Okay, that's twice now. I I'm just not gonna be able to hold back, am I? We'll let her take care of the healing for now, both on herself and for Titus. And maybe Titus can even throw another cheer on top, because this cheer actually stacks. You can use it multiple times and do it, like, get really big increases, as much as, like, 50% increase in the damage you deal, possibly even more. I'm not totally sure, but see, 85. She was doing, like, 40 before. I'm doing one, I'm almost doing 200. So you can really take this guy out in a hurry. Now he's going to go this way the other way, and he's going to stop over here to rest, and we're going to do the same, because he's out of attack range, so you're not going to have many options. Now, trigger commands are just pretty much, they just show up once in a while in uh, battle, so you can just stand by, which is something you can only do in this battle. There will be other trigger commands that come along later, like talk or something. Holy crap. That hurt. So let's just go back to the attacking again. I'm not I'm concerned about healing. We'll be okay. Now, eventually, once the battle's gone for a while, you'll trigger a new trigger command, which will help you to eventually win this battle if you don't win it at this point, which I don't know if that's possible, actually. I think after you've dealt a certain amount of damage, it just automatically goes to that stage. See, now it's showing a different angle. Stand by. Now, when Titus' trigger command comes up, it's going to be different. Pincer attack. You choose that, and he'll direct her to go the other way. Yes. He's like, yeah. Dude, this is just so cool. It's cooperative battle, and people act like humans in battle. You'll even find later in the game that characters frequently talk during battle. And you, you never know what they're going to say. It's just so cool. I mean, there's only so many things they can say, and eventually you get those all memorized, and then it gets old. But it's still, I, I think it's still pretty entertaining to listen to some of the stuff they say. Like, I'll never get sick of hearing Warren say farewell before vanquishing a monster. That's just too epic. Ouch. We still have the cheer on us. I don't think that ever goes away. It might wear off after, like, five turns or something, but like, he's, he's not even touching us. We're okay. Tentacle rape! Get out of my butt, man! Surprise butt sex. Surprise tentacle sex. We're done. Usually you can tell by the camera angle, once you get used to it, when the last hit occurs, it'll show a different angle than what it's been, what it's been showing. Sometimes from overhead or something. And it's just really cool. Can I have some food now? Because I need food! <laughs> I, I bet that's getting so annoying. I just, man, 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 man. You know, and then to, just to twist the knife, they go and make you work your way back out of here again. I think. Maybe not. Please put me back on the ship and just let us be done with this. Oh, yes, and it seems the power has been restored. Yeah! I'm not exactly sure what they're doing here. 
Because I don't think this ever comes up again later in the game. We just restored power to some thing down there, that's all we really did. But I can't remember a time later in the game that that becomes pertinent. It's just something random thing we did with the uh, Albed people here. You can see Riku swimming way down there. She kind of just goes off on her own. Yeah, but you just follow. No sense in going down, because we're trying to get back up to the ship here, so... Just follow the red arrow on your map, like I said, it'll tell you where to go. And that's it for us. Well, hope they're satisfied with my hard work. Maybe they give me some freaking food! What's a guy gotta do to get some food around here? Yeah. Pork rind? Pug rind! Okay, what is this? What are all these angles? I don't remember this. <laughs> I kind of like it, though. I, I don't mind when games drag out stuff like this, because I like getting a feel for the atmosphere and just being absorbed into it. And that's half of what I like about this game. I just get so absorbed into it that I feel like I'm really there. And the, some of the atmosphere is just so beautiful. The only thing that really that they did in this game that was a huge departure... Well, there was a lot of huge departures from previous Final Fantasy offerings, but one of the <laughs> biggest things different about this game is there's no overworld. Oh, right. So you basically just go from one area to the next. Look at him shaking himself off like a dog. He looks so stupid. Huff Ruff. Yeah, he even said Huff Ruff. He just said I looked like a dog. Hey. You. Hey, I helped out, didn't I? Yeah, see, I helped out. And they didn't give me no food, man. I'm hungry. I'm ravenous. Or is it ravenous? I don't know. My stomach is growling. Uh, hungry. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna put a Stofers in. Give me some Stofers. What the hell? Don't kick me! Girl? Oh! Whoa! Right on! <laughs> he just eats with his hands. What a. Oh. Your ass is nasty! Ugh. What did they poison me? Well, why am I not surprised? <laughs> yeah, water's gonna take care of that. Water doesn't help you when you're choking. You gotta get it out of your throat, man. It's you eat too fast. Oh man. We might have to split this cutscene between one video and the next. The game is nice enough to give you a little intermission where you have to talk to the girl to continue the scene. So, so I can split the video at one of those points. Hello there. What is your name? Riku. Okay, they do tell you her name is soon. Okay, great. You really do understand. Awesome. It's like the end of Little Black Book with Carly Simon. See, I mean, see how he's just laughing? I mean, I don't know. Didn't you say so earlier? I didn't get a chance to. Everyone thought we were a fiend. So, she wouldn't really say that. Uh, we? Oh, we means you. Ugh. Um. Okay, whatever. Who are you guys anyway? We're Albed. Can't you tell? Yeah, like totally. <laughs> Wait, you're not an Albed hater, are you? I don't even know what an Albed is. Nice butt shot. Where are you from? Xanarkin. I'm a Blitzball player. Star player of the Xanarkin Abes. <laughs> Did you hit your head or something? Uh, no. What are you talking uh, about? You guys hit me? Yeah. Oh, right. Do you remember anything before that? Hmm. So I told her everything there was to tell about Xanarkin. About life there, Blitzball, and Sin's attack. And about how Aaron and I were engulfed in this light. I just said things as they came to mind. But then I started to wonder. Hmm. Did I say something funny? You were near Sin. Mm hmm Don't worry, you'll be better in no time. They say your head gets funny when Sin is near. Maybe you just had some kind of dream? Yeah, I dreamt I was a moron. You mean I'm sick? Because of Sin's toxin, yeah. Uh, you should. No. Yeah, there is no Xanarkand anymore. Sin destroyed it a thousand years ago. What? What? So, no one plays Blitzball there. That's bull. Huh? I'm not- what, are you telling me I'm that old? Oh. What, what, what do you mean, a thousand years ago? Are the wrinkles so obvious? But I saw Sin attack Xanarkand. You're you find this man. Thousand years ago? No way. Uh, yes way. Find out more next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy X. See ya.